Hey everybody, Buzz Smith, the Evangelist, still at the uh, North Texas Auto Show. Today I'm with JR, and we're standing over in the uh, Currently booth, and these guys answered a question that I used to get all the time when I sold electric vehicles. People uh, who want to get combative will say, well, what, what happens if I run out of juice at the side of the road? You know, AAA can't bring me a gallon can of electrons. Well, guess what? Now they can and uh, rescue you at the side of the road. But there's more applications to it than that, than just that, right, JR? Well, oh, absolutely. So we're actually taking the, the roadie, which is a portable, ultra-fast, DC fast charger, actually, uh, that's modular, it can go anywhere. So we take advantage of that and not only rescue people on the side of the road where AAA is buying them and, and uh, Allstate and roadside rescue, but we're actually delivering charge to people for convenience. So it, we're actually preventing, not preventing, but making it easier to own an EV because you don't have to go to a charging station. We'll bring it to you, we'll charge your vehicle for you. It's really a concierge service. So you can go, it's almost like those windshield replacement services. Yes. You can come to where I work, you can come to home. Yes. Or if I'm breaking out the side of the road, just come anywhere that I'm at. And yep. Recharge my car. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a rescue, but it's also a convenience. It's really, you know, it's, you say, think about how many hours you spend. If you don't charge at home, you spend a couple of hours at a charging station each week to keep your car charged. What do you, so that's two hours in your pocket every day if, we, if someone else charges it for you. You can do it at work. Uh, so if you're in a meeting, you hit a button, that's the only time you want us there. We'll come to your parking lot, we'll charge you up, no problem. And right here on the signs, you can see it, it's EV charging delivered. So those of you that are living in multifamily housing, like apartments and condos, you don't have to miss out on the EV revolution. Something like this can allow you to charge at home and have an EV like any of us that are homeowners. And they can also come to your home. So if you haven't, if you're an older home and you can't put in a, a, a level two charger, you just don't have the extra capacity in your uh, uh, circuit breaker box, then that's a way that you can charge at home, even though you don't have that ability. And they can come to where you work. So while you're at work, your car is outside being charged. Exactly. exactly. That, that's a great idea. Thank now you. the the speed you said is uh, 20 kilowatts uh, max. Yep. And, and of course, just like any other EV charger, the closer you get to full, the, it's going to get slower and slower. So you'd probably recommend filling up to what? I recommend filling up to about 80. It, it helps your battery a little, a little longer as well. Yeah. Um, plus, it slows down an awful lot after 80. So it's, it's, it's best for everybody. You know, we can deliver fast. We can get in and out of your hair. Um, hair? And, yeah. Hair? What are you doing to <laughs> yeah, I'll be there quick. I'll be there very, very soon. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been really uh, surprising. Like it started off as a small experiment to say, hey, well, people want this delivered. And before you know it, like, wow, we got to add more capacity because everybody needs it. Um, and we really learned that, you know, 22% of all uh, families live in multifamily homes. Um, and those 20, that means 22% of people don't have easily, easy access to charge. Even more when you factor in old girl homes, only 40% of homes have the capacity to add EV charging. And that's changing, which is great, but it's costly to do so. So that's really, really why we were developed where we can come in and make sure that everyone has access to EVs. You know, if once we level the playing field, we took away that hurdle, that big fear of everyone has about charging. I can't get an EV because I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to charge or I can't charge at home. That goes away. And, you know, we found when we show up, and we can charge it for you. People, you know, they, it's not even a thought anymore about owning an EV. Yes, I can absolutely do that. And, and currently you have like a subscription plan, right? So Correct. you can pay by the month. And exactly. So it's a one month fee, depending on how much you want charged, how many deliveries you want. So it starts off as little as $25 and that'll give you a couple of deliveries per month, or you can go really right up to eight charges uh, per month if you'd like. And that's just, uh, that tops out at about $80. And uh, each one of those times month. you're about 80% filling the car? Uh, yeah, you, you typically the, the, you can request the range. You dial it in how much you want. Oh, okay. Um, so it start, you know, typically people ask, uh, believe it or not, between 50 and 100 is the typical charge delivery. Um, because we show up so often, they just kind of want to pace it out. And a lot of people adjust. Sometimes people start at eight visits, they dial it down to four or dial it down to two. You know, we, we're very, very flexible. We try to work with people, make sure that they get what they need. And, you know, the question I used to get all the time was, can you charge it in the rain? How about with these units, just like a regular level two or DC fast charge? Yeah, you can charge in the rain. We don't, uh, typically if it's a downpour where we feel it might be dangerous for our folks to be out there, we'll we'll reschedule it or, you know, if it passes, we reschedule that day or we'll make it up early the next morning. But it's, it's tough. We want to make sure it's safe for everybody, uh, including our drivers. 
Oops. Oh, it's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want to be okay. We've never um, had an incident, but yeah. And you did mention AAA. So yes. you've actually sold some of these to companies like AAA. Yes. So that they can rescue people at the side of the road. Absolutely. So we we sold to AAA, uh, Allstate. Um, we had a partnership with them where they bought a bunch for their providers throughout the country. Um, we're seeing more and more and more. Um, and it's really thrilling because when the AAA start to have more of these roadside assistance companies start to have the ability to charge or rescue people. Other people are going to see that, and their fears go away about owning an electric vehicle. And, you know, it's it's just that's it's just so good for the community, it's so good for the planet. Now, once you have charged somebody, let's say you've drained the batteries down, how long how long does it take you to fill those back up so you can oh. go back out again? All right, so the roadie, uh, each battery is going to take you about I would say about three uh, three hours to recharge off a one ten outlet. It doesn't need any special, just home outlet. Yep, just a one ten plug plug, uh, and it goes up pretty quick. Um, you can recharge, get right back on the road. Uh, we have a lot of people who actually keep them constantly cycling. So they come in, they get, you know, those are done, they take the next batch, they keep those on board, um, then the next crew will take another bunch. So you're just rotating them at the Absolutely. home base, yes. charging them up while they're out in the field yeah. with other ones. Some people just drop it off at someone's office and, and recharge them, because you can do it anywhere. It's not, it doesn't kill oh, the system. Yeah. It's it's really, really, really flexible. You can drag it into Starbucks and plug in there. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I'd love to see that happen. If it happens, let me know. Uh, I'll get that on video. Yeah, I would, I would definitely want to get that on video. So if you feel like you've had to be left out because you didn't have a place to charge at home, these guys can come to you at home, go to you at work, anywhere on the road if you happen to run out of juice. And for those of you who don't know, you have to really work hard to run an electric vehicle out of electricity. It's going to warn you over and over and over that it's getting low before it's finally going to give up the ghost. It's true, but it, it's also that, that peace of mind that you have that you know that we can come and take care of you. So go ahead, give it a shot. And, and just like he was saying, JR was saying that, you know, they originally thought this would be like a little niche thing, and then a lot of people got interested Absolutely. in it. Something I've been talking to people about with EVs is we can't predict the different businesses that are going to be launched by this. You know, when the internet first came out and we were struggling to download a 100K JPEG, we never thought we would stream television. We never thought that we would order clothes over the web without trying them on first to see how they looked on us. Uh, we never thought that we'd get deliveries overnight, but Amazon and Hulu and Apple TV, all of these multi-million, if not billion dollar businesses took off because they had the framework of the internet to start from. Now we've got the framework of DC fast charging out there, level two charging at home, and companies like this that are coming up into the EV world. And who knows where this is going to go, but this is a great first step. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's really exciting to be in the EV world. And thank you so much for everything that you're doing, spreading the word. <laughs> appreciate it. That's my job. All right. <laughs> JR, thank you for your time. I thank really you. appreciate it. Y'all right. stay tuned. We'll have more stuff from the North Texas Auto Show. Since the roadie is capable of DC fast charging, JR flips the DC port cover down on the car's charge port and plugs in just like you would in any DC fast charger. The roadie components you see on the right are a stack of four battery packs topped by a controller. Stacking the batteries connects them, but until the controller is placed on top of the stack, the connection is incomplete. JR presses the white lighted start button to start the charge session. The controller checks the attached roadies to see how full each battery is and to make sure everything is functioning normally. The red button is an emergency stop. When charging, fans in the controller turn on to cool the electronics during the charge. The car and controller begin communication with one another to determine how full the EV's battery pack is, that there are no electrical faults that could cause a problem with charging, and at what rate the EV can accept DC current. When the light on the e-tron starts flashing green, charging has begun. Each of the roadie's batteries and the controller have indicator lights to let the user know each battery's state of charge and status. It doesn't draw one of the roadie batteries down and then the next, etc. If each of the roadies is not at the same state of charge as the others, it draws energy from them to level the charge in each roadie and then draws from all simultaneously. This is done to maximize the battery life of each roadie. That's pretty smart. 